first book when I was 17 or 18. Yeah. Uh, but then I, I just um, I'd finished school, left India and gone to, to the UK. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, and I was there for three or four years. Hmm? Yeah. And, and the book was written while I was there. Yeah. Although it was based on journals and notes that I'd made here before okay. leaving. So when I went to England after school, in fact when I finished school and came home, yeah. And my mother said, well, what are you going to do with yourself now, Ruskin? And I said, I think I'll, I'm going to be a writer, Mom. Yeah. It wasn't very fashionable in those days. Yeah. And she said, don't be silly, go and join the army. Hmm? <laughs> okay. But uh, in the army, I would have, they would have had another Beetle Bailey, you said. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I said, no. So she packed me off to England. Okay. So there I worked. Um, in, uh, I worked in for a tra for some time with Thomas Cook, the travel agency. Okay. I worked in the PWD. I worked in a grocery store. I worked for a photographic firm. I write in my book at night. Oh, that okay. novel, that first okay. book. That okay. First book. Okay. And they, when they gave me an an advance in those days, the standard advance was fifty pounds. That's all. Okay. But uh, well, it doesn't seem much now. Yes. But it was enough to come back to India. I came back then, I started freelancing. Okay. For, from Dehradun for a couple of years and from Delhi. And while in Delhi again, I did for some time okay. take a job and do okay. some work. Then I got fed up of Delhi. Okay. <laughs> I said, I'm going to live and work in the hills. So okay. I gave up the job okay. and took off and managed someone. Okay. <laughs> We didn't have many book publishers here. Yes. Hmm? Except for our academic publishers. Yeah. So uh, most of my writing was done for magazines and newspapers. Okay. And I, in fact, literally bombarded every newspaper in the land hmm, with my articles, stories. Okay. In those days, they published quite a lot of fiction, whereas you don't okay. see fiction now yes. In, yes. In, in magazines. Yes. But they did then, and so I, a lot of my sh short stories and some of the best ones were written then. Litfest, I don't find them uh, because they usually tie me out. I have to do things. You yes. Know? But I prefer, like, you know, a book for fair uh, exhibition where there are lots of books. You yeah. can just, uh, you know, enjoy the books uh, yes. rather than have to be performing. You could meet a uh, and a well-known writer and not know who he was unless you were told. Yes. And uh, as it happened to me once, I was just a youngster and in London. I've been invited to give a talk by the BBC, hmm. because those were radio days. Okay. Um, and uh, so I was sitting outside the studio waiting for my turn and uh, another gentleman came and sat beside me and then we started chatting and as you do in England, talk about the weather and the cricket. So <laughs> then um, he got up and went into his studio to give a talk huh. and my producer came along and said, hello, Fred Raskin, you've been, how did you enjoy talking to Graham Greene? Okay. Now I didn't know who was Graham Greene okay. till I was told. I did write one or two erotic stories, one of which got me into trouble and I published this, this story called The Sensualist in uh, f for we don't matter who was editing Debonair yes. in Bombay and Debonair was always getting into trouble so partly it was <laughs> Debonair <laughs> if I had been published somewhere else maybe I'd have got away with it <laughs> but because it, then there was an, a, an obscenity charge and a uh, warrant came for my arrest came to Missouri and uh, non bailable warrant but I managed to get bail Okay. Then I had to keep coming to Bombay to appear in court to defend this charge. Okay. Uh, which, and it dragged on for two years. And that's the end of two years. The judge says he'd enjoyed the story and gave me an honorable acquittal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> after, all, after all that, the okay. marshal. <laughs> Somebody asked me yesterday, would I like to write? Um, a monthly newsletter addressed to parents advising them on uh, how to bring up their children. Yeah. I said, I'm the very last person to ask people that. <laughs> because 
Usually I tell children, don't listen to your parents. <laughs> <laughs>